Hello guys, today we're gonna to talk about how we can generate number and shape patterns. Today's learning goals are to be able to generate a number or shape pattern that follows a given rule, as well as identify apparent features of the pattern that were not explicit in the rule itself. So let's get started. Let's talk about what a pattern is. A pattern is something that repeats. Sometimes you see patterns in shapes or letters. Other times, numbers make a pattern. You can create patterns when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide. You can see patterns in things around you. For example, look at the lines and trees and shrubs below. The pattern goes tree, tree, shrub, tree, tree, shrub, tree, tree, shrub. Now, if I were to use a number pattern to identify the rule of this pattern, I would go ahead and just number first tree, second, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going to circle the numbers to identify my shrubs. Three, six, nine. So the rule for my shrubs I can see is that for each, it increases by three. For every two trees, I get a shrub. So the third figure will always be a shrub, which means that this rule is add three because all of the multiples of three will end up being a shrub. Another way that we can identify patterns is by using a hundreds chart. So we first need to find what number we're starting with. They ask us to start with the number four. So I'm going to circle the number four on my numbers chart. Now my rule is add four. So I'm going to add four to that four, which means that I'll start by linking one, two, three, four, which lands me at eight, which means the next number in my pattern is eight. Then I'm gonna add four more. One, two, three, four, which starts me at 12. Four more, one, two, three, four, lands me at 16, and then one, two, three, four, lands me at 20. Notice I circle each fourth number. So the number I start with is circled, and then the number I land on is also circled, which helps me to indicate whether or not I have the correct number in my pattern. So this particular pattern, four, eight, 12, 16, and 20, is an even pattern because as you notice, every number that I have in my pattern is even. And be, the reason why it's even is because I started as an even number and I added an even number. So anytime you add even numbers together, you always end up with even numbers. Another way that you can find a pattern is by using a number line. And a number line is fairly simple because you just draw your line. And at the beginning of the line, you start with the number that you want to use. Now, in this case, they want us to subtract three. So because you're going backwards, a good practice would be to start your 80 here and move backwards. So I will subtract three. One, two, three. So where did I land? 79, 78, 77 is the next number in my pattern. That's one way you can use your number line, or you can go ahead and number your line. 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, and then continue to jump. So here I landed at 77, so now I'm gonna go one, two, three, which lands me at 74. One, two, three, this would be a 71. And the pattern would continue. So in this case, it's totally up to you whether or not you want to pre-number your number line or add your numbers as you need them. Now, one more strategy that you could use, and there are a plethora, but these are just a few, is to create a table. So in this case, my rule is multiplied by two, and I'm gonna start with the number three. So what I'll do is this. 
I'm going to create a table, right? On this side, I'm going to put my numbers and this number will tell me where my rule is. So my rule is multiply by two. So my starting number is three. And once I multiply that three by two, I get six. So I'm gonna add six to my pattern. Now I'm gonna take my six over here and multiply it by two, which gives me 12. So I'm gonna add that here. And then I'm gonna take my 12 and now he gets to come over. Now, once he's multiplied by two, he becomes 24. And now I'm gonna take my 24 and now he gets to move over and multiply him by two and he becomes 48. Simple enough? All right, so let's look at a word problem where we may have to use a pattern. Orlando does push-ups every day. This week, he wants to do four more push-ups each day than the day before. Find out how many push-ups Orlando will do each weekday if he does 20 push-ups on Monday. All right, so now there are a couple different strategies that I could use here. One strategy that I could possibly use would be the number line. Okay, so if I were to use a number line, the way my number line would work is I would start with 20. And then it says each day he wants to add, excuse me, four more push-ups. So on Monday, he wants to do 20 push-ups. Now on Tuesday, he's going to add four, which is 24. On, and that is Wednesday, Tuesday, I'm sorry. Then we're gonna add four more on Wednesday, which gives us 28. We'll add four more. So now we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, now we're at Thursday. Thursday, after we've added our four, he's now done 32. And then on Friday, we add four more and we have 36. Okay, so using our number line, we have created a pattern to tell me how many push-ups he does each weekday if he starts by doing 20 on Monday and increases by four each day. Another tool that we could use would be a table. And a table is very similar to using a number line in the sense that it would allow you to write down the days and then use that pattern. So Monday, he had 20, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So now in this case, I know the rule is at four. So on Monday, he started with 20, so we don't have to add four. But on Tuesday, we add four to 20, and that gives us 24. To find Wednesday, we have to add four, which will now give us 28. On Thursday, we add four, which now gives us 32. And on Friday, we add four, which now gives us 36. Now, the reason that I did not keep going is because the question specifically asked about weekdays, and weekdays only have five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So either strategy is fine. However, you do the one that's the most comfortable. So let's go through and do a little more practice. Now, in this question, they want us to tell the rule for this pattern. So in this case, they've actually given us a number pattern and they want to know 
the rule. So if I'm looking and trying to determine the rule for a pattern, I have to figure out the relationship first between those two numbers. Now, first off, I can see that each time I get a number, it gets larger. So I know that this is an increasing pattern. Now I have to determine, well, why, by how much is it increasing? And is it increasing steadily? Now, there are a couple ways that I can turn 6 to 12. 6 can be multiplied by 2 to get 12. However, if I multiply 12 by 2, I won't get 18, but will get 24. So I know that my pattern is definitely not going to be a multiplication pattern. However, I can use addition because I know that 6 plus 6 is 12 and 12 plus 6 is 18 and 18 plus 6 is 24 and the reason I know this is because all of these are multiples of 6 so in this case the pattern would be for me to add 6 because this is an increasing pattern and each time my value increases by the number 6 so I can eliminate C and D, and I eliminated B right off the bat once I realized this was an increase in pattern. Now let's look at this shape pattern. Now recall I told you that you could use numbers to identify shape patterns. So in this case, for example, I have one white star, I have two black, three white, four black. So if you notice, the white stars are all odd numbers. The black stars are all even numbers. The amount of stars corresponds to the amount of rows. So in this case, they're asking me about the eighth row. So that means that the eighth row should have eight stars. So I can eliminate A and D because they both do not have eight stars. They actually only have five, which would be the actual next row of the pattern. Now, because I'm looking for the eighth row, I'm looking for an even number. And recall I just said, even numbers have black stars. So we know in this case that the eighth row would be C. Amelia wrote a pattern using the rule subtract 12. The first two numbers in her pattern were 96 and 84. Which number below is a part of Amelia's pattern? Okay, so in this case, we know that we have a decreasing pattern. And the reason we know it's decreasing is because it says subtract 12. So I'm going to use a number line and I'm just gonna jump back. So 96 minus 12 is 84. They gave us the first two numbers. So now I'm going to subtract 12, which will give me 72. And then if I subtract 12 again, I see 60, which is the next number in my pattern. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate 66 and 68 because those numbers are greater than 60. Now, I'm not sure if you're noticing the pattern that I see, but I'm looking at the first digit of the number, and I see a pattern of 9, 8, 7, 6. Hmm. That tells me that my next number more than likely may start with the five. But hmm, I know that 60 minus 10 is 50, which means that it could not be possible for my next number to start with the five. However, I do see another pattern. Six, four, two, zero. The number in the ones place is increasing by two each time, which means that whatever number is in my ones place 
is an eight. So I can go ahead and eliminate F. However, I want to just verify that this is correct. So I could always just subtract 60 minus 12 because the rule is subtract 12, which requires me to regroup. 10 minus 2 is 8. And then this is now a 5 minus 1 is 4. So the next number in my pattern was 48. So G is indeed the next correct answer. Now let's look at this next number pattern. Now these numbers look relatively large, but if you look very carefully, there's not much difference between the thousands and the hundreds place in either of these numbers. The change happens in the tens and ones place. So we're only gonna focus on the tens and ones place. So looking at the tens and ones place, I see the pattern of zero, five, 10, 15, 20, which means that the next number in this pattern should be 25. And because the beginning of the pattern starts with 2000, I'm going to assume that the remaining pattern should start with 2000, which means that the correct answer is B. Marcus followed the two rules below to make a pattern. Hmm. So this pat pattern requires two rules. It says begin with the number four. So we're going to begin with the number four. And each time we add six. So we're looking for the fifth number in Marcus's pattern. So we're going to add six. So the first number in his pattern is four. Adding six to that pattern will give us 10. Adding six gives us 16. Adding six more gives us 22. Adding six more gives us 28. Now, if four was the first number, that means that 10 is the second, 16 is the third, 22 is the fourth, and 28 is the fifth. So the fifth number in Marcus's pattern is 28. The table below shows a relationship between the input numbers and the output numbers. So I'm looking at my input numbers and I'm noticing that they increase one, two, three, four. So my input is an increasing pattern. But as I look at my output, I'm noticing 85, 86, 87, 88. It is also increasing. Now, each time it increases, it only moves to the next number, which means that it has increased by one. So the pattern for the output is add one. Now, this is where it gets tricky. The question wants to know the relationship between the input and the output. Input and output. We see that input, the relationship is increasing. Output, the relationship is increasing. However, what's the relationship between the input and the output? Here, from the input, I get one, and it outputs 85. I input two, and I get an output of 86. I input three, and I get an output of 87. I input four, and I get an output of 88. One way that I can solve is to figure out what is the difference between my input and output. I know 85 minus one is 84. 
86 minus 2 is also 84. 87 minus 3 is also 84. And 88 minus 4 is also 84. So I can go ahead and eliminate G, which I may have originally thought was correct had I not looked at what the question specifically asked for me. I know that I did not multiply by 85, but I want the relationship between the input to output. So if I put a number in, am I going to add 84 to the one or do I subtract 84 from the one? That's correct. You added 84 to one and you got 85. So when you think of input, you think of if I put in, what do I get back? Okay. All right. So now let's look at our last problem. In this pattern with dots, they want to know how many dots will be in the sixth turn. Well, let's look at how many dots are in the first few turns. The first term has two dots. The next term has four dots. This term has six dots. And this term has eight dots. So as you notice, this is also an increasing pattern because each time I add more dots. Now, how many more dots were added each time? Well, two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight. So I can tell that it is increasing by two. However, the question is not asking me what the pattern is. The question is asking me how many dots will be in the sixth turn. So if I add two more dots, the fifth term will have 10. And if I add two more dots, the sixth term will have 12. One other pattern that I notice is that the number at the bottom, if multiplied by two, tells me how many numbers should be in that pattern. So for example, one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight. So if I wanted to know how many were going to be in the sixth term, I could have simply multiplied six times two and I would have also gotten 12. So patterns are extremely simple. And they can really help you to understand numbers and relationships between them. So I want you to go ahead and try. I know you can do it because guess who's the most awesome person today? You are.